This is not a laboratory or a warehouse for chimpanzees, in spite of the way it looks. It's a sanctuary run by the wealthiest and most powerful animal advocacy group in the country, the Humane Society of the United States. Yet this sanctuary, Project Chimps, has received the highly sought after accreditation by the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries. So you might be asking yourself, why does Project Chimps look like this? How can it possibly be accredited? And what on earth is going on here? My name is Donnie Moss. I'm an animal rights campaigner in New York City. In May 2020, I heard the news that the Humane Society of the United States filed a lawsuit against two whistleblowers at its Project Chimp Sanctuary in Georgia. The whistleblowers were two of 22 employees and volunteers who sent a letter to the chairman of the board, Bruce Wagman, pleading with him to address the systemic welfare problems such as dangerous veterinary practices, poor living conditions, and infrequent access to the outdoors. The 77 chimps at this facility have access to an outdoor yard for just a few hours every third day. For the rest of the time, they're held in concrete enclosures. HSUS is warehousing these chimpanzees while giving the public the impression that the chimps spend their days outdoors in a sanctuary setting. I wasn't surprised to hear about the welfare problems at Project Chimps because I saw many of the same problems with my own eyes at HSUS's Chimpanzee Sanctuary in Liberia, Second Chance Chimpanzee Refuge. Only there, the cruelty takes place in secrecy, on six small islands with no infrastructure, on a remote river far from public view. I couldn't understand why HSUS was neglecting these chimps after having raised millions of dollars to take care of them. They were doing the bare minimum to keep them alive. And that's when I realized that HSUS was raising money off of these chimps, not for them. Circling back to the chimps in Georgia, in May of 2020, I got together with about 10 other grassroots advocates, including several with experience caring for captive chimpanzees, to launch a campaign to compel HSUS to drop the lawsuit against the whistleblowers at Project Chimps and to improve animal welfare at that facility. Within two months, HSUS dropped the lawsuit and that freed us up to spend all of our time advocating for the chimps. We sent letters, organized online actions, created a petition, and protested at the homes of HSUS board members, all of the typical tactics in a campaign. Our efforts to help these chimps got several boosts during the second half of 2020. In July, National Geographic published an in-depth investigative story that corroborated the whistleblower allegations, and in the same month, PETA issued a public statement to sound the alarm about the welfare issues. In October 2020, and again in March of 2021, the Non-Human Rights Project issued public statements calling on HSUS to provide their clients, Hercules and Leo, and the 75 other chimps with daily access to the outdoors. Lastly, in November, a renowned primatologist who conducted an assessment at Project Chimps gave the sanctuary a D on its welfare management programs. So HSUS could no longer say everything was great and that we were just misinformed or disgruntled former employees. All of the evidence of poor welfare begged the question, why is this sanctuary accredited by GFAS, the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries? Whistleblowers identified 21 GFAS standards that Project Chimps doesn't meet. As it turns out, GFAS has a conflict of interest. Two of its four founders were affiliated with HSUS and still serve on the board of GFAS. HSUS owns the GFAS domain and HSUS gives money to GFAS. And it must be a substantial amount because the HSUS logo is on the GFAS website. How can GFAS objectively assess an organization that gives it money? We realize that operating a chimpanzee sanctuary is extraordinarily challenging, and we're not asking for perfection. But Project Chimps falls so far short of GFAS standards 
and what the public believes a sanctuary should be, that we have no choice but to speak out. These chimps suffered for decades in laboratories. The least we can do is provide them with a humane retirement in a true sanctuary setting. What we're asking for is so basic. One, create additional outdoor enclosures on its 236 acre property so that the chimps can get outdoors every day instead of every third day for just a few hours. Number two, until these new yards are completed, rotate two groups of chimps instead of one into each of the two yards every day, one group in the morning and the other in the afternoon, so that the chimps have access to the outdoors four to five times each week instead of two to three times. Number three, hire an executive director who has captive chimpanzee experience, who instinctively prioritizes the welfare of the animals, and who commands the respect of his or her peers in the primate sanctuary community. Number four, hire a veterinarian and a vet tech who have chimpanzee experience. Number five, appoint two new people to the board of directors who have captive chimpanzee experience and who are willing and able to operate independently of HSUS. Please join our effort to help these chimps. You can find us on social media at Chimps Deserve Better.